Hello lovelies, welcome back to the channel. I thought with the year coming to a close, it would really be fun to sit down and talk about everything I made this year. I started this year by sitting down and telling you all my goals for 2021, and I came up with a word that would keep me focused for the year. The word that I chose for 2021 was learn. So I would like to go through the projects that I made this year and kind of dissect what I learned on each one and how I can continue to learn throughout this year and the all the coming years. At the end of this video, I will share with you what I would like to accomplish for 2022, as well as my new word going forward for this new year. So without further ado, let's take it back to January. We started the year with a few smaller projects while I acquired materials and knowledge for a rather larger project that I was working towards at the time as well. The very first thing that I made this year was the Scarlet Witch headpiece in honor of WandaVision because Scarlet Witch is my favorite character and I actually released a free pattern for that over on my website which is still there if anybody ever wants it it'll be there as long as my website is there after the scarlet witch headpiece i made a cinderella disney bound skirt as well as a witchy blouse this was actually a really hard time for my family toby had unexpectedly lost his mother and we had to fly back to Arizona to take care of her estate. He is an only child, so he was the only one that could do it, and I wasn't going to let him go do that alone. So most of my projects were put on the back burner to help support him, and I learned some things actually about myself during this time, which was really important for me and the development of who I am as a person. This experience taught me that small wins like stash busting projects or like really short projects like circle skirts and things like that are really beneficial to my own personal like morale and making things for my stash just made me feel a lot less wasteful or like a lot less like I have all this stuff that I don't use. So I learned that these small projects are really beneficial to my creativity and also that projects that are easier that I like can execute pretty quickly and without a lot of struggle allows me to just get a little bit better at being a sewist in general and kind of gives me some freedom. So that was really beneficial. From there, I kind of dove deeper into my stash busting phase and I had this like weird desire to just sew from my stash and not add any new materials or things to my studio. It's kind of similar to the phase I'm going through right now. So in that phase of my year, I made an 1890s petticoat, which I actually just uploaded the free template to my website this week. So if you like a free 1890s petticoat template, check that out. This petticoat kept me warm on both my New York and Chicago trips, just wearing it under like long skirts. And that was pretty cool. I was also clearly trying to summon some spring energy and I made a cottage core apron, which allowed me to learn how to do white work embroidery. And even though <laughs> making this and filming the like reveal of it, Georgia looked like winter. It felt like spring, like it was in the 70s. And I don't know, it was just a really cute project that made me feel cute. It made me want to garden, even though I have no desire to garden. It made me want to run in a heat, like a hill of flowers and sing at the top of my lungs. So it was a really good project to have. Next, I made something for Toby. He gets like one costume a year which is kind of sad. But anyway, I made, I finally made Toby the Jedi costume that I promised him in 2019. When we went to Disney World, he made his own lightsaber and I told him I would make a costume inspired by that lightsaber. I finally did that and that was completely stash busting, 
which was awesome. And I learned how to do free motion quilting as like a decorative technique, not just a like, let me do free motion in order to get this applique or lace attached to this thing that I needed to attach to, if that makes any sense at all. And then to go with Toby's Jedi, I had to make myself a Sith costume. I mean, come on. So I made myself a Sith costume, which consisted of a bodysuit and a belt with a really cool obi um, and a cloak and, or like a robe. Um, and that was mostly stash busting. I think I bought like a yard or two of Yahya Han fabric for it, but still like I was in this stash busting phase so I stuck with it. Finally in June I finished the first big project that was in that like 2021 costume ideas video and that was my 18th century scarlet witch costume. A big reason why that costume took so long is because I was also working on a huge NDA project at the time which I will be sharing what that was near the end of this video, so stay tuned. And so making that costume just was like so tedious. And I'm gonna be honest, it went completely off the rails. There was like embroidery digitizing, sequins, layers. I learned how to do tailoring techniques. Not a lot, not very well, but still, like I started, I learned how to pad stitch. I learned how to take a pattern from a book and like blow it up and put it and digitize it. It's not really that different from doing it like when I draft a pattern, but it still was something I learned. And honestly, it was a lot of fun. It was not fun photographing that in June in Georgia. <laughs> so hopefully we'll get some snow here soon and I can do a really good pretty photo shoot with it. Otherwise, I might have to make a trip up north one of these years in the snow just to photograph this costume. So the next palette cleanser project that I made was my medieval renaissance fantasy dress that I made for the renaissance fair. This was like a day and a half build and this actually like taught me how to focus and prioritize and also still have fun at the same time. I actually like love this dress. This is my favorite reveal segment I've ever filmed for my channel. And I want to go back to making that kind of reveal segments for next year. But I love this dress. I will be making something similar to it out of a velvet at some point, but I really love this dress. I'm happy I did it. It was exactly what I needed as a palette cleanser and yeah. Oh, and then after this dress, I got to play with some more embroidery, which I love. We love embroidery here. And I actually made my own insertion lace for a Gibson Girl blouse. And this blouse is actually my most worn blouse in the summertime because of how light and airy it is, but also how pretty it looks. Oh, I feel so pretty in this blouse. I really love this blouse. And it was just a really great, really great palette cleanser. This one taught me how to be a little bit more patient, especially with embroidery. You, I, I know you have to wait for it to stitch out, but like really making myself come to the full realization of how much time I need to allot myself for embroidery on a project. And I think that's a really important lesson to learn as well. So finally, onto the next big project, and this was a big boy, oh my gosh. I asked Instagram to help me design a costume inspired by a Volta fabric and the idea that I would like it to be a Disney costume and y'all served me some, you served me some good ideas. So we ended up making an 1850s version of the Ariel's ball gown from The Little Mermaid 2, Return to Sea. That's a mouthful. Oh. The, this project was so much fun for me. I learned a couple things. I learned how to digitize lace from a picture from an extant garment, which was really fun and such a cool challenge. And I've watched Sostein do this, like digitizing anything from extant garments. And I thought this was a good, like dip my toes in project. And now I have a lot more that I would really like to try to do eventually someday. But I also learned that even if I think I know exactly like 
what I like the exact measurements I need to make a skirt it's probably still important for me to be making a mock-up obviously like a circle skirt and a double circle skirt it's not as important but the skirt that I made for this aerial gown it ended up having the wrong proportions than I like that I wanted I still absolutely love this gown this might be my favorite thing I've made this year we'll think about that when we talk about Halloween but like I love it I think the silhouette's beautiful I just wish that I had made a mock-up of the skirt so that I could um, have the proportions that I wanted so I love this project I love this gown so the next palette cleanser that I made was an Edwardian gown with lace but a little bit modern. I originally was going to make this as a Mary Poppins Disney bound for my August Disney trip but I wasn't able to get it done in time. I still made it and this is probably my second most worn garment for the summer. I absolutely love this dress. I really want to make one in black. I want to make one in purple. I want to make one in like a dark gray. I want all of them. I really like this dress. It's a lot of work but it's so pretty and detailed. I would love to make a floor length one. I just, I really like this dress. After the Edwardian dress, I made a the Countess from American Horror Story, which is Lady Gaga's character. And I dream someday of having an entire Lady Gaga cosplay calendar. So I made this as a costume to wear to judge a contest in at Dragon Con because I got to judge a contest, but also as an easy new Lady Gaga look. So I made that in less than a day. I planned a day. It only took me like six hours, I think, to make. It's a really cute dress. I still haven't photographed it. So um, that's, you know, it is what it is, but I really liked it. And then after that, I made a my interpretation of a Selkie gown. And this one was kind of challenging to make a cupped bodice. I've only done it once before and it failed. And I would still consider this like in the, the C minus range. I have a lot to learn about adding cups to dresses, but I still love the way this dress photographed. I thought that this photographed really, really beautifully. I did not like wearing it. The sleeves fell down, the cups were weird didn't like wearing it, but I loved the way the photos turned out. I love the way the dress looks and I would totally revisit making a selkie dress or honestly like a princess dress that you would wear running to a castle in Ireland. I would make one of those again, totally. For Halloween, I made my Rococo Sarah Sanderson gown. And I, you know what, now that I think about it, that is my favorite thing I've made all year. I loved getting to figure out how to embroider a fabric so that basically completely changed the textile. And I loved that. I digitized my own embroidery for it. And then I embroidered the panels in a way so that it was like it was an embroidered fabric that I cut out versus just adding embroidery. Um, the wig didn't work out, but I learned from you guys that you would like to see wig content. So I think I'm gonna be wearing this in February, and if so, I will buy a new wig and style the wig and make a video on that, which to me, like honestly, when y'all tell me what kind of content you like to see. It really helps me decide like what videos I'm gonna make. So that was a really great learning lesson. And like, to be completely honest, I made new stays for this costume too. And I love the stays. Not only do I love the stays, but I love the colors. I chose the stays and they've made me want to like completely envision or design a gown around those stays. Anyway, my Halloween project, definitely my favorite thing I made all year. And then after my Halloween project, I just did a few more palette cleansers. So I did what's called a gunny sax dress and I got to um, do this in collaboration with a bunch of friends on YouTube and it was called Gunny Saxoween. Um, I didn't know what a gunny sax dress was 
and this project allowed me to learn about what these dresses were. I went on a huge deep dive. I have maybe two to three Pinterest boards for <laughs> these dresses because they're really, they really do vary in style and aesthetic, um, but they also cover lots of aesthetics. So that was a really fun project that I was supposed to have done for Halloween. And it was another time where I learned I'm just not gonna get it done. Like I, I did not give myself the time I need to make it. And so I finished it the week after and it was totally fine. I also started feeling burnout around this time. And this is the second year in a row I've noticed that um, actually, I would say it's been about four or five years now that around Halloween, I start to really get burnt out and, um, or I start burning out and then it gets worse throughout the year. And so I actually only made a couple more projects after Halloween. So I did the gunny sacks dress and then I made a, um, the American Duchess cape as well as a walking skirt uh, to wear in New York. And I really liked making these. These were definitely garments that were super easy for me to make, super fulfilling for me to like be like, okay, I used stash fabric as well as now I have these cute garments to add to my um, like repertoire and like my closet and I feel cute in them, like really cute. <laughs> and they kept me warm in New York. So I really liked those projects. And that's honestly the last thing that I have sewn this year. I think, with those two garments, I learned that it is okay to fall back on what you already know. I've also learned that when you remake or like do something in the realm of what you already know, you tend to get better at that and that makes anything new you do even better. So this brings me to that big NDA project that I started in January and finished around October-ish. I wrote a book. That's right, I wrote a book about cosplay foundations and basically what goes underneath a modern day ball gown or a set of armor or how to attach things. Yeah, I wrote a book and it comes out on June 26th and it's available to pre-order on Amazon right now if you are like not if amazon's not an option for you i will be releasing pre-orders on my website in may so stay tuned for that in all honesty like writing a book really took it out of me i mean i i went into it knowing like this is going to be hard i'm not a writer i'm a sewist like i make costumes but it was so fulfilling like it was so rewarding my mission has always been to like educate and to empower people to make the big, beautiful things that they want to make. And getting to write this book, like it just is one more like way that I get to spread my mission. And so anyway, it just was really cool. I wrote a book. Ah. But another thing that I did that I'm really proud of is that I stuck to weekly uploads for all of 2020 and all of 2021. That's two years of at least one to two videos every single week. And that's a lot. <laughs> that's a lot. And uh, it's pretty cool. And uh, I am... I'm very thankful that I, I at least gave myself the space to try it and do that and, and be here. So I guess, like, what's next? <laughs> well, to start, I am going to be making Glinda's bubble dress from the hit musical Wicked. I have an entire costume breakdown video that you can check out if you wanna know a little bit more about that. And I'm gonna be starting sewing on that in a few days now, actually. So yeah, I'm so excited. I'll also share some costume ideas that I have. I don't know if I'll get around to all of these or what will happen throughout the year. Ultimately, I do have Patreon vote on my costumes. So I'll put up like, this or that and then they get to vote or sometimes it'll be this that and the other thing so if you are interested in voting on what i make you can head on over to patreon.com slash casey renee cosplay otherwise i guess i'll just throw out my ideas and if it's something that 
you would like to see me make, maybe just like say like, hey Casey, that costume sounds cool in the comments and um, I don't know. It might help me make decisions. After Glinda, I would like to start making some couples costumes for both Toby and myself. The first costume that comes to mind for this would be a Sweeney Todd by the sea cosplay. This is basically Sweeney Todd and Miss Lovett in the song by the sea, but not the one where they're on the boardwalk, the one where they're like sitting on the beach. I think those would be really fun cosplays to wear at like Dragon Con or when I'm like guesting at a convention where Toby will be comfortable and I might not be as comfortable or actually I think that that costume looks really comfortable. I feel like that would be fun. I am 100% planning to make Mary and Jack's costumes from the cover is not the book song dance number in Mary Poppins Returns. I have wanted to make these since I saw this movie and I actually want to do it the way Sandy Powell did it where you silk paint the garments so that they have the like detailing and it's gonna take me a little bit of time to be able to save up for the silk and silk painting materials. So I don't know when this costume is gonna happen, but it's definitely a needs to be started this year. If not, like my next project after Glinda, we'll just kind of see where it lands, right? This is just me being crazy. I think it would be really, really fun for Toby and I to learn some of the, like maybe the chorus or some of like a couple verses of the song to perform when we're at conventions. I just think it would be funny and fun and like I'm gonna be honest anytime I think of cosplaying with Toby I think things are already more fun like it already sounds like it's more fun so anyway. I'm also thinking about making Nandor and Nadja from What We Do in the Shadows for Toby and I. Um, both of these costumes Kind of like the characters have so many different costumes throughout the show that we can kind of do our own thing within the aesthetic. Toby is absolutely hilarious when he does Nandor impressions. Nadja cracks me up. And I think these costumes would be so fun to wear at Dragon Con. So I'm highly considering making those for us this year as well. And again, I just I think it'd be hilarious. <laughs> um, I'm also thinking about my Halloween costume obviously. It's my favorite thing to make ever. It's been my favorite costume the last two years in a row. So this year I'm thinking of doing the Corpse Bride as my Halloween costume and making it this big extravagant gown. I've wanted to make this costume again for three or four years now and I'm convinced that I should do it. <laughs> I would love to make this costume. So again like with these costumes we'll see what where things land, what happens throughout the year. Who knows, I might not get another book deal. I'm just kidding. God, no, not yet. Not, I'm not ready for that yet. Um, but anyway, some other costumes that have been floating around in my mind that I would really like to consider for this year or just the future in general. Um, Giselle's wedding gown from Enchanted. It's the big white poofy dress. Obviously, if they release footage of Ariel's live action Little Mermaid dress that they're filming right now. That might just go straight up to the top when that gets released. We will see. A big, big dream of mine would be to someday be able to make Tiana's green ball gown and hire a model to wear it. That's outside of my financial means right now, but someday I'm going to be able to do it and it's going to happen. I would also really love to make a silver version of the live action Cinderella gown. I'd love to make Alphaba's Act 2 dress. I mean, these are just me spitballing ideas of like the list of things that I just would love to make someday. It's so long and it gets longer like every day. <laughs> but I would love to make these things. So anyway, I just wanted to throw that out into the universe to someday manifest them. Someday, someday, my full-time job will be to make ball gowns on YouTube and I will be able to make every single dress I could possibly dream of or imagine. Who knows when that day is gonna be, but it will be someday. And to help me get there, just watching these videos and sharing them and interacting with them has been a huge part in getting me closer to this dream. So thank you all seriously so much. 
and if you ever wanted to take it a step further and get us a step closer to this dream patreon and Kofi are also really great ways to just kind of like help make the magic happen <laughs> that's so weird to say but it is magic I make magic the studio makes magic <laughs> It's gonna get annoying this year, but I'm just gonna let you all know. You can pre-order my book, or you can buy my book, or I'm just gonna tell you every week, or every time I upload, to buy my book! <laughs> anyway, that's a great way to help support this dream of being able to make educational sewing content, specifically on ball gowns. I like ball gowns. I like making gowns. I like big fluffy dresses. Anyway, the last thing that I would like to close this video out on is my word for 2022. And that word is story. I want to focus on getting better at telling the story of how I make things, of what I do, of why I make these things or why I want to make these specific costumes. And that means that I will be taking a step back I am so proud of two straight years of weekly uploads plus some, but I'm not going to upload weekly. I am going to still upload on Wednesdays and my goal is three videos a month. So taking a week off basically, but I can't guarantee that I will have a video up every single week in order to tell the best story that I can. I would really like to get better at editing. There's so much I want to learn about the software that I use and the equipment that I use, and I just want to get better. So that is the word for the year is story. And anytime I don't upload or I won't be able to upload, I will post in the community tab like, hey y'all, no upload this week. I do post on Instagram a lot, like almost daily in my stories all the time. So if you want to like know all the things, my stories are kind of the best place to go for that. But yeah, so that is my goal. A special shout out to all of my patrons. Thank you all so very much. Without you, I would not be able to buy fabric to make the videos that I make on this channel. So thank you very much. I'll see you next year and may all your dreams come true.